السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Today we're going to start with a new activity One titled Enzymes, Agents, Digest We said before that enzymes are chemical substances that uh, help in the transformation of food from complex molecules into simpler ones The question that raises here is can enzymes work all the time and under any condition? In order to answer this question, we are going to study three experiments found in this activity. Experiment 1. In this experiment, we have a water bath and degree Celsius. And in it, there are two tubes A and B. In tube A, there is some cooked starch. In tube B, there is an albumin of an egg, which is a type of protein. And in both tubes, there is fresh saliva. Here, it's very clear that the objective of this experiment is to see or test whether saliva or the enzyme in saliva can digest or transform protein as it digests or transforms starch. Because if you remember in activity 2, we reached a conclusion that in saliva there is an enzyme that can transform starch to sugar. Here they want to know if this enzyme can also transform protein into another substance. Now, after one hour, as we see here in the clock, you see that we did two food tests. The first food test is for tube A, which is failing test. And as it shows, it, it uh, gave us a brick red precipitate, which means that in this tube there is sugar. And we know this uh, result already because we already know that starch in the presence of saliva is transformed into sugar. Now, in tube B, this time we did biorit test. And this test is done because uh, we put protein in the tube one hour ago. But as we see here, the color with biorit test was violet color, which means that there is protein. This means that the protein that was put in the tube an hour ago is still present. It was not transformed into any other substance. Here, we can say that the enzyme in saliva could transform starch to sugar, but it couldn't transform the protein. From this experiment, we can deduce the first property of enzyme, which is called specificity, and it means that each enzyme acts on a specific substrate or a specific type of food, just as starch acts uh, can be digested only by amylase, and uh, other types of food have specific enzymes that can digest them. Now, experiment two. In this experiment, we can see a graph that shows the variation of speed of, of the reaction between different enzymes as a function of pH medium. And to remind you, the pH medium uh, has three uh, types, acidic, neutral, and basic. Uh, uh, 7, pH 7 is the neutral, before 7 we have acidic medium, and after 7, from 7 to 14, there is basic medium. Now, as it shows in this graph, we have three curves, each for each enzyme. Curve A is for pepsin, curve B is for salivary amylase, and curve C is for trypsin. And as we see here, that the speed of reaction of each enzyme is varying as a function of pH. Sometimes it's nothing, it's null, near zero, and sometimes it reaches a peak or the top or the best uh, speed of reaction. So here we call it the peak. These points, these three points are called peaks of the speed of the reaction. Now if I want to look at each curve alone, at each enzyme, let's see where is the peak of the speed of reaction of this enzyme. If we look at pepsin, if and we make an orthogonal projection to the x-axis, we see that pepsin, the peak of the activity of pepsin, is at pH 2, which is in the acidic medium. While if we look at salivary amylase, we can see that its peak is at about 6.8 pH, which is a neutral medium, while trypsin peaks at pH 8, about 8, which is a basic medium. 
Here, we can see that each enzyme can be active in a convenient pH medium. So here we can go to the second property, which says that each enzyme acts in a convenient pH medium. Experiment 3. In this experiment also, we have a graph that shows the variation of activity of enzyme in percent as a function of temperature. Here in this ex experiment, it's very clear that the manipulated factor is temperature. I wanted to test its effect on the activity of enzyme, which is the measured factor. Here also we notice that the activity of enzyme is variable, so it's clearly, aff clearly affected with the temperature. And we see here also that there is a peak, or we can say there is an optimum condition, or best condition. This optimum condition, is between two temperatures 35 and 40 degrees celsius well if we look before for a 35 uh, exactly at zero we see that the enzymes are not active at all also at 60 degrees celsius the enzymes are inactive here there's a special thing about the temperature that all enzymes are best active between these three uh, these two temperatures 35 degrees Celsius and 40. At zero, the enzymes get frozen. They are frozen. But if we return the temperature to 35 or 37, they will be active. But if we increase the temperature to 60 degrees Celsius, the enzymes get destroyed. So even if we go back to 37 degrees Celsius, the enzymes will be destroyed. They will be broken down. There will be no... Uh, as if there is no enzyme, so there will be no digestion. So here, we can go to the third property, which is enzymes are best active between 35 degrees Celsius and 40 degrees Celsius.